Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and today we're going to be learning the intro riff to Led Zeppelin's classic Black Dog, this barking beauty of a riff right here. <laughs> Yeah, I just love this riff. Let's do it again, but slightly differently. The Jimmy Page way. I insist. Yes, my friend, as per your requests in all your comments to our five Led Zeppelin riffs not on Rick Beato's list, we're going to learn a Zeppelin riff or three over the next few videos. This one is taken from the British band's legendary fourth long playing release. This one right here. Yup, the album with no name that was unleashed on the world in November 1971 and is often referred to simply as Led Zeppelin IV, an epic opus of rock riffing goodness. Nice. As already mentioned, we're going to be learning the main intro riff from the classic track Black Dog. Now, this first riff in question, the main one uses our faithful old five note friend, the A minor pentatonic scale. This one right here. <laughs> That's stated, the third note in this sacred riff actually isn't in the scale. <gasps> Shock horror. It's what is known as a passing tone. And if you don't know what one of those is, don't fret, all will become clear. Has mud, only kidding, in a minute, so stay tuned. And incidentally, if you don't know the scale in question, don't worry, it's easy, and there's a link to a lesson in the video description below. So go away, learn it, and come right back. This video is going nowhere, it's waiting for you. Go, do it. We're going to learn the Black Dog riff by breaking it down into three bite-sized chunks. The first one of said bite-sized chunks is made up of the first seven notes of the riff, these ones right here. <laughs> The first note is at the seventh fret on the A string, which we fret with our third finger like this. Then we play three consecutive notes on the D string. The fifth fret with our first finger, the sixth fret with our second, then the seventh fret with our third, just like this. So if we add the first one to those three, we've got this. Now, as already mentioned, that third note isn't in the minor pentatonic scale. To be specific, the guilty note is the one at the sixth fret on the D string, this one right here. The other three of the first four are in the scale though, these ones right here. So not in scale. It sounds a bit gnarly by itself, doesn't it? And then the three that are. We just throw that in between the second and fourth notes, so it becomes. That's why it's called a passing note, because we're literally passing through it in between those two correct notes that are in the scale. Makes sense? Cool. Let's move on. Now we know the first four of the first seven in section one. Let's learn the other three notes, shall we? For note five, we go back to the very first note we played, namely the E note at the seventh fret on the A string with our ring finger like this. So now we've got five notes. Now our next note, note number six, is a little tricky as it's on the fifth fret of the G string. Right there with our index finger. And that means we've got to skip over the D string with our pick like this. Now, if you don't get this right away, don't worry. String skipping with your pick is a little tricky at first, so always remember the three sacred P's, namely patience, practice, and perseverance. A deal with them, and you'll be nailing this before you know it. Actually, here's a little trick that might help you. Even though it might sound counterintuitive, I start the riff with an up pick, like this. That means I'm down, up, down on these notes which means I'm up on the next note. 
and then down on the jump note. I just personally find that easier than starting with the other way around, down, up, down, up, because then the skip is down, then up, then down again. But whatever works for you is good. Make sense? But wait, there's a little more to note six than meets the eye. We don't just play it, we give it a little blues bend like this. Now, a lot of tabs label this as a quarter step bend as we're only bending the note a hair. So it ends up sitting somewhere between the unbent note, this one here, and the note one fret above it on the same string, this one here, which sounds dodgy by itself. When you do the bend, you're right in between. Make sense? Blues bend, quarter step, call it what you will, it's cool. Now this slight quarter step bend gives that note a little attitude. And to quote our good old pal, Uncle Ben Ella, you can't do that on grandma's piano. It's a guitar thing, my friend. It gives the note eyebrows, just like that. Now probably the best way to nail this bend is guess what? Listen to the way Mr. Jimmy Page plays this riff very carefully and pay particular attention to that little blues bend in question. As the saying goes, if you can hum it, you can play it. Allegedly. It's a feel thing, so stick with it. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. It took at least two, maybe three. So far we've got six of the seven notes in the first section, namely these ones. So we need one more note, and it's going to be this one here. The note at the seventh fret on the D string, this one right here. So now we've got this. And a hair slower. And there ends section one, done and dusted. Let's move on to section two, shall we? Section two is made up of the next nine notes of the riff, which are these ones right here. Now let's break this section down into two chunks, shall we? So section two is really section 2A and section 2B. Section 2A will be the first five notes of said nine, namely these ones. Once again, a little slower. So what we're doing here is simply this. We're playing the seventh fret on the G string with our third finger. Then we're moving to the E note at the fifth fret on the B string with our first finger. Then we're doing a pick, hammer on, pull off move between the C and D notes at the fifth and seventh frets on the G string respectively, like this. So it's pick, hammer, pull off. So one more time a little slower. And incidentally, once again, if you don't know how to do hammer-on and pull-off combinations, there's a link to a lesson right below. So go away, learn, and come back. We'll be here when you get back. Now in the intro, you might remember me saying I'm going to play this the Jimmy Page way the second time I played the riff, because he plays those notes slightly differently. How do I know that? He didn't show me himself, unfortunately, but I watched the Live at Madison Square Gardens video when they played that song live, and you can clearly see him doing what I'm about to show you, which is namely this. What he does is he plays that first note the seventh fret on the G string actually with his first finger and then instead of going to the B string for the next note that follows it, he just goes to the ninth fret on the G string with the third finger like this. As opposed to... This means that those first five notes are all on the same string, because you go... So does that way? The page way, or the idiot's way. Go with whichever one you think sounds and feels most natural to you. You've got a choice, make one. So that was section 2A, the first five notes of section two. Now let's learn the remaining four, shall we? Which is section 2B. And those four notes are these ones right here. <laughs> And again, a little slower. Uh, 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 
Now, if those last two notes sounded familiar, it's because they are. Yup, they're the exact same two notes we finished section one with, namely the quarter step blues bend at the fifth fret on the G string, followed by the A note at the seventh fret on the D string. These two right here. One more time. And as luck would have it, the first two notes of the four that are in section 2B are also at the seventh fret on the D string. They just play twice, like this. Make sense? So... That's our next four, section 2B. So now let's put section 2A and sections 2B together and see what we've got. And we've got this. Or the page way. Like I said, pick one and go with it, but don't forget that all important quarter step blues bend. Give that minor third some eyebrows. And I can't do that rock move, that thing there, whatever. <laughs> So, we've got section one, we've got section two, and that means just one more section to go. But, before you tackle section three, I strongly recommend you first learn how to play sections one and two together back to back, just like this. <laughs> And once you've got that down, you're ready for the final section, section number three. This one right here. As you can hear, it's seven single notes. And then our good old pal, the open A5 power chord hit twice. And that's it. So let's break this down so we can move on and play the whole riff. The first three notes of section three are the G note at the fifth fret of the D string with your first finger, followed by the A note at the seventh fret on the same string, played twice. Pretty easy, right? Then the remaining four single notes in section three are all played on the A string, and they go as follows. The fifth fret on the A string with your first finger, then the seventh fret with your third, then we move our fretboard hand back two frets, so our index finger is now at the third fret, and we play that note. And then we play the note at the fifth fret on the same string with our third finger. Makes sense? So we've gone... One more time. Pretty easy, right? So, so far we've got this. Now what we've got to do is those two good old open A5 power chords. And just to make that power chord crystal clear, I'm just playing two strings. I'm playing the open A string, and then I'm fretting the D string at the second fret with my first finger, then hitting them both together like this. Root five, open A5 power chord, nice. So that means the whole of section three is this. And there you have it, my friend, the whole enchilada, as they say. Here's what it sounds like slowly when section one is played into section two and then straight into section three. And a little faster. And there you have it, the magic Jimmy Page created with just the A minor pentatonic scale, a passing note, and a cool blues bend or two, and also a simple open A5 power chord. Yep, Mr. Page is, was, and always will be one of rock's finest riffologists. Have fun with this, and try working that quarter step blues bend into some of your pentatonic riffs and licks. It's magic. That said, I'm out. See ya. Thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to like, 
comment nicely please, and of course subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs. Have a simply wonderful day, Albine. Toodle pip. <laughs>